Welcome back aliens, my name is Avin Reddy and let's continue with this series on Django. And finally, we are reaching to that point where we, we are connecting our application with a database. So basically we want to fetch the data from database, so that's what we are doing now. In the last few videos, we have talked about Postgres and ORM and then we have done the setup with the Postgres as well. So if I try to open my PG admin, that's how you can access your Postgres using some IDE or some view. And you can see we have a server option here. So if I expand server, you can see we have database and unfortunately, or fortunately, we only have one database which is Postgres. So let's create one more database here. And the way you can do that by right click on your screen, right click on your database and say create database. And let me just have the name of the database as Talisco. Uh, Postgres will be owner of this and let's click on save. Nothing to specify much. So you can see we got a database which is Talisco and in this, if I see the schemas, tables, there's no table here. So you can see we got database, but we don't have any table now. So let's create some and that to those tables should be coming from the application. So we'll do that. Uh, so if you want to connect your application with this Postgres DBMS, you need to do some configuration. So let's head back to our Visual Studio and here we need to do some settings. So let's go back to the Disco project. This is where you have settings.py. And now let's do setting for database. So if you scroll down somewhere, you will find databases, right? And by default, it says it will get connected with SQLite 3. Hold on, we are using Postgres here. So we don't want to specify SQLite 3 here, right? So let's make the change. So here we'll say backends, uh, it should be Postgres SQL. Database name is Telisco, so we don't need to specify all this stuff. We can simply say Telisco. That's my database name. Let me give a comma here. Now we have to set, specify something more because uh, if you want to access your Postgres, we have to specify the credentials as well, the username and password. So let's do that. So in single quote, I will say who is the user. So if you remember, we have talked about user as well and that is your Postgres. So this is what we have seen while installing Postgres. You have to also mention the password here. So we'll say password. In fact, we have specified the password, which is 1234. And then we have to also specify on which machine you have your database. It is possible that in your network, you have another machine in, in which you have your DBMS or Postgres install. So you can specify the host. And this is where you can specify the address. I mean, the IP address of that machine. Time being, it's the same machine, so I will be using localhost. So that's the thing you have to specify here to connect with database. Uh, so this configuration done. Okay, but there's, a, there's one problem. Postgres being a different software, Django being a different software, how they will connect? So basically we need a connector in between and the connector name is if I go to Google and if I search, so the connector we are going to use is Cypoc2. Uh, so if you see, uh, it's, it's basically a database adapter. So Postgres database adapter, which connects with Python. So you can see it says it's a connector or the adapter between Postgres and Python. So this is what we wanted. Uh, so how do we install this? So we have a simple command, which is PIP install and then you can specify the name. So let's head back to our prompt here and we'll say PIP install the software name. <laughs> so you have to say PIP install name of the package and say enter. And this will get downloaded, it will take some time and it's done, so it was quite fast. So you got the adapter as well. Now what is the next step? Now basically if you remember we have talked about ORM. So Django has this amazing feature of ORM. It will create a database tables for you. So example for authentication, uh, if you have your own models, it will create database there. So let's try to migrate. But, 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 before migration, we need one thing, right? We need a model. So the table which you want, which is destination, will be depend upon your model. And you will say, hey, we have a model file here, right? So if you see, we have a models.py, this is where you got your model. But no, actually, this destination is a simple class. You want to convert this into a model. This will not work. So how do we do that? So it's very simple actually. So if you want to convert a class as a model, if you want to give that more power, we have to specify models.model. So basically you are inheriting the feature of models there. Now, will this work? Mm, no, still it will not work. Because see, when you say you are creating a table, so table will have a type of columns as well, right? So if you say the column name is name, the type would be varchar. That's, that's what we do in, uh, in SQL, right? Character string or the character in bracket, you mentioned the uh, size. So here you can't simply say str and int, it will not work in that way. And first of all, you don't even have to mention ID in your model because in database, it will automatically create a primary key for you, the ID column. So let's remove that. 
So I want to change this. Instead of having name, I want to specify the, the type of the column there. Now, how do we know that? So let's go to Google again and search for Django. So if you search for Django model fields, uh, in their official documentation, uh, they will help you with this. You can see on, the, on this side, so we can see we have field types. The field types is auto field, big auto field, and then binary field. We have character field, that's for, for string. Uh, we can also have email field. Uh, we can also have image, if you want to upload an image. So you can see we have different type here. And how do we use each one? Uh, so if you just scroll down, they will also help you with the format, so maybe, yeah. So you can see we have auto field, this is how you, this is how you should be using it. Uh, they also have the examples here. So if you want to use character field, you have to say character field and you have to specify the attributes as well, the max length. Let's use that. So here the name would be characters. So we'll say models dot char field. And in here you have to specify the maximum length. So I will say max underscore length. And the length would be let's say 200 or maybe 100 will do. Nobody has a big name more than 100, right? <laughs> we'll do something Im for image later. But as of now, let's stick to description. And in description, you will say again, models dot. Okay, but what should we be using for description? Description might be big. So we'll be using text field here. We don't have to specify the size. For price, it should be int. So I will say models dot integer. Do we have integer? Yeah, of course it should be. So integer field and for Boolean, you guessed it right, we should be having Boolean field. Done, job is done, so simple, right? But then when you say Boolean field, by default, it should be something, right? By default, there should not be any offer on the, on the places. So by default, the default value here is, let's say, false. Anything else here? Yeah, we have to specify for image as well, right? So we are missing for image now. So in the image, you have to upload the image, right? It will not be stored in database. So when you upload an image, it will be stored in a folder and you have to specify the path here. That's where you have to specify the path, right? Path is important. So what I will do is I will say models dot and you will say image field. So for the image, you have to use image field. And in here, you have to specify the location you want to upload to. So example, if I go back and if I say uh, image field, so you can see in the image field, we have to pass upload to as the attribute. So where you will upload this? So I will say upload to, and let's say any name, I will say pics. There's a folder named as, named as pics, I will upload the, everything there. So there's one particular problem which everyone does. In fact, I did that in my first project in Django. And the problem was, uh, normally when you specify the field type, you give a colon and field type. But here, now since you are working with models, you have to give equal to because you're assigning the values here. So this is important because if you miss this, it will not create any column in your table if you don't specify equal to. So that's done. That's, I think it should work now. But how do you verify this? Now, first of all, if you want to create a table, you have to migrate your models to the data database. And for that, you have to pass a command. So what is that command? So let's go back here and say Python. Of course, you have to use manage.py. The command is the first thing you have to do is you have to, you have to make a migration. Because if you see a folder here, uh, in your traveler, you have a folder which is migration and it is empty. In, uh, yeah, we have one init.py, init but we don't have the migration file. So let's create a migration file. So we'll say make migrations. This is the command you have to pass, say enter, and it will create a migration for you. And we got an error. Okay, so you can see there's an error and it says uh, the traveler model destination is not available in the installed apps. So if you go back to settings.py, if you remember we have talked about installed apps or maybe not. So you have to mention your application name here, whatever you're working with. So let's do that quickly. So the app name is, so traveler.apps.traveloconfig. This is what you have to mention here. So your project should know what apps you're working with. So this is important. So if you don't do that, it will not do the migration. Let's do the migration again. I will say CLS. Let's do migration again. And we got an error again. We are missing a comma. Can you believe that? Let's go back. Okay, let's say CLS and if I say migration, okay, there's another error now. Now this, this error makes sense. I was expecting this error. Now, when you want to work with images in Django and since you want to upload them, so you should, there should be some library to handle that and that library is below. So you have to install this as well. So let's do that quickly. So we'll say PIP install. I know there are so many softwares you have to install, but everything will be done only once, right? So let's do that quickly. So it's installing pillow now and that should be done fast, right? Okay, finally, we can make migration. I hope this time this will work. Let's say enter and it worked. Can you see that we got a migration done and in your migrations now, so if I expand this time, 
Yeah, so you can see we got one more file which is 0001 underscore initials dot py and if you open that file, this is the migration you are doing. So basically you are doing a migration which is create model and these are the fields you have. And you can see ID, even if you have removed ID by, by default it will give you an ID which is auto increment field and you got name, image, description and offer. This is what we wanted. So everything looks cool here till this point. But what do you think? Have we got a table there? Unfortunately, no. We have just created a migration file. We have not actually migrated something. So if you want to see what the SQL is, you can simply say python manage.py SQL migrate and to mention the package name which is Travelo. And then you have to mention the migration file name which is 001 in this case. So you have to say python manage.py uh, SQL migrate the app name and the version number or the, the migration number. Enter. So this is the SQL query it is going to execute. Create table, travel destination, uh, the primary key, and then the columns. You don't have to write a SQL query, right? Yay. Okay, now let's do the actual migration. So I will say python manage.py and simply say migrate. Simple command, migrate. Say enter, and you can see done. No errors, that's something amazing. Let's go back to our browser. In fact, PG admin, I hope we will be getting tables now. Let's refresh, or maybe I will simply say right click here and say refresh, expand this. Yes, we got tables. So all these tables has been given by Django. We don't even need them for as of now. We wanted this travel destination and you got it. Okay, we got table. But if I want to show the data here, so if I say all rows, okay, this is empty because we have not entered data as of now, but you can you see that we got a structure. Now you got a table from a class. That's the magic of ORM. Right, so this makes sense. You got the setup and everything is working as of now. So we have done the migration, but what's more important is we want to add data, maybe with the help of some admin panel or maybe with, maybe with the help of some page, but we will do that later. So that's it from this video. I hope you are enjoying this series. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos. Bye.